thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to chat with you guys. You know, it really demands respect to be able to show up and say, I've been in your shoes, I was successful doing so, and I know it's been a very short-lived thus far, but how has been um, being a head coach been so far? Yeah, it's been great. I mean, I think a lot of who I am and who I know I will be in this role is highly influenced by what I experienced as a player um, and obviously highly influenced what I experienced as an assistant coach in this league. And so I think for me, it's taking all those pieces, putting them together and what would benefit this group the most. And I'm extremely excited for the 2024 season to kick off. But let's stay with that energy because we're kind of in the full swing of the off season right now yes and it's yeah. that time of year where fans supporters pundits were looking at some of the headlines we're writing about the team saying what comes next or what's that next move going to be you yeah. sort of hit the ground running a little bit already now that you've been named head coach the draft is right around the corner i, I would love to hear a little bit more about your your newest signing for for the team and just sort of walk me through the process of going ahead and, and getting such a, a UK standout in, in Yuka Kurosaki. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think for us, it was, you know, obviously, like you said, it was hitting the ground running as quick as possible. And for us in the off season, um, it's trying to build the roster as much as possible, given the way that I would like to play. Right. So implementing that style of play and who would essentially fit um, in those pieces and, and the additions that we're looking to bring on. Um, and I think someone like Yuka, she just stands out massively from a technical and a tactical perspective. Um, her thought process and her awareness and moments and understanding of space um, stood out massively. Um, and so for us bringing her in um, and having an opportunity to obviously see her in our environment day to day, um, obviously we have high hopes with what she can uh, you know, provide to the group. And I think for us, it's just continuing to find these spots that we would like to fill, but more importantly, it's filling the spots with not only players that we feel would excel in the style of play I'm looking to implement, um, but also would fit in the locker room. You know, a, a lot of people don't touch that side as well. It's got to be, will this be a great fit for us? But what is she like in the locker room? Um, and so it's building these relationships with um, who we're looking to bring in and how we can get that in information as quickly as possible. And obviously, again, like I said, uh, early on implementing this style and, and finding the players that I know would, would suit the style um, is very important. Bev, of course, giving the best tactical, technical answer like we've ever had. I love it. Um, and for those who don't know, Bev and I played together at Rain and mm -hmm. Before she mm -hmm. got her U.S. soccer coaching licenses and is the amazing coach she is, she was coaching me even as we were teammates. So, Bev, <laughs> I want to know who kind of gave you your blueprint and inspiration to go into this coaching sphere because we're seeing more player, former players now become head coaches in the league and get their licenses and try to, you know, have influence in that way. So I want to know how what led you to this point? Yeah, no, I think for me, it's I've known since about 23, 24 that I actually wanted to be a coach, um, how that played out and how my passion led from on the field as a player to now on the field as a coach. Um, I wasn't aware of the timing of when that transition would occur. Um, but for me, it was at 23, 24 when I actually went over to Japan, when the WPS folded at the time. Um, and I spent two and a half seasons there learning a very technical and tactical side of the game. Um, I didn't speak, obviously, a lick of Japanese. Um, and, and so it was any exercise that we did. I was putting myself two, three players back to understand, OK, it's one touch there. It's two touch there. We moved left. Then we go right. I'm like, OK, I think I got this one, you know. Um, and for me, once I experienced that, I kept thinking to myself and I said, I will never forget this moment. How many Many people out there are like me that feel that they are so far behind technically and tactically. And here I am, 23, 24 years old, two years of WPS at the time. Uh, I competed in the ACC conference as a college athlete. And how do I feel so strongly about this? Why do I feel like there's such a lack in my game in these two aspects? And here I am learning from 16, 17 year olds. Here I'm learning from national team, Japanese national team players that are the, the some of the best of all time, right? But it, my point is, is that I started to learn in areas of my game that I was confused as to why I was just now learning it. And so I made a promise to myself at that point, my, I have such a passion for educating. And at some point my career is going to end. I wanna educate because I bet there's a thousand, if not more of me's out there feeling this exact same way. And so that's where it first started. And I started getting my coaching licenses and playing at the same time, which 
um, obviously helped me become a better player because everything I was coaching the, the kids on um, at the time was, you know, check your shoulders, body shape. Can you have open mind? I'm like, well, I need to be better at all these things too. Um, but my point is, is that I knew it deep down inside that I, I, I was going to become a coach. I just didn't know when that transition would officially occur. And, and obviously later in my career, I felt such a big pull and tug towards it. Um, and for me, it's, it, it's, I, I think it's, it's something to be said about educating. We talk about coach. We talk about coach. We talk about manager. We talk about we're educators. We have a duty to teach the game. We have a duty to experience scenarios and teach scenarios for these players to understand no scenario is ever going to be the same, but they're going to get enough tools to understand. Oh, last time I was in this exact position in some capacity, I didn't check my shoulder. Now I'm going to check my shoulder. Oh yeah. There's my outlet putting them in the scenarios enough to understand what the what the game looks like and how to execute in those scenarios. And so for me coming into this role, I'm going to be an educator and I've brought on staff that I believe is going to educate and is going to create an environment because I'm big on this as well. No coach makes a player. You don't make a player. Mm -hmm. You create an environment for a player to thrive in and become someone they didn't even know they could become or knew they could become, but haven't gotten there yet. And so for me, the education piece, I can't talk about enough. I'm an educator and I am looking so forward to teaching not only my style of play and the simplicity I'd like to bring with it to allow these players to be creative in it, but also the education piece of how do we make you a better player? Because I'm telling you right now, you ask a first year draft pick and you ask an NWSL veteran, a national team veteran, they'll tell you the same thing. We want to get better. So you have to create an environment for players to thrive in and feel like they're developing. And so for me, I'd like to hit the ground running in that sense. Sorry for wow. that. I am worked up. I want to play for you right now. I want to sit in a, a locker room with you with a whiteboard and have you do X's and O's and teach me things. So I, it's very cool to hear you be so passionate about something that you now get to do in your life. I, I feel like so often people just try out different jobs and see what sticks and see what works, what they're good at and what they ultimately like. And you clearly have had this passion for this, for teaching, as you say, but we've never seen a full team under Bev Yanez and, and what these players could potentially learn. So what do you want to teach them specifically this year as your first year as an NWSL head coach? Yeah. And I think for me, it's just continuing to implement obviously areas individually, we can help them push, but it's obviously in, uh, implementing my style of play and how they best do, suit that style of play and what those adjustments are um, to their game. Cause I believe, uh, and again, investment in the relationships with the players too, right? Because I, I, I believe a lot of who we, who players are off the pitch and who we are as human beings off the pitch transcends to who we are on. So how to build those relationships with the players to understand, okay, this player maybe likes a little bit more film. This player likes a little bit more on the field, you know, grab them by the shoulders and say, move a little bit left here. You see that view now? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. They, they want that visual piece over sitting down and going over film. Sometimes they need the combination of it. Sometimes they need a tactical board. And so so it's building those relationships for me early on to understand what those needs are and bringing on a staff that I know will invest in building those relationships early on and have the communication with me so that I can understand what those needs are. And I think it's just implementing that style early. Um, and, and if there's one thing that I've learned throughout my time and I'm going to continue to learn, I'd be ignorant to tell you here that I know everything. I don't know everything, but I believe that's what made me who I was as a player is because I was always willing to learn more. And I know coming into this role, if I can bring that same aspect, obviously in a leadership role, if I can bring that same aspect, I know that I'm going to build uh, as much as I possibly can around me to provide the best environment that I can for this group. Um, and it's holding them to standards and it's supporting them within that, right? It's that give and, and, and take and that push and that pull of this is what I need from you. And I'm going to be clear, this is what I need from you, but I'm going to help support you to get there. And so I think for me, it's just creating that whole piece of getting the players buy in obviously early on and continuing to make sure that they're bought into the process and that they feel valued both on and off the pitch, because I'm telling you right now, people want to stay when they know they are valued in both aspects. Bev, this is wonderful. I feel like so inspired. I know it's the new year, but but really just hearing everything that you've had to say and, and your passion for the game just kind of transpires through in every way that you speak. And it's very obvious that you care about this. Um, but the different places that you've played, so say um, Australia, Finland, Japan, you mentioned learning the different, I guess, tactics or the different ways in which every country you know, has a different 
don't know, way of being and bringing them. Yeah. Do you think that, um, you have a set way because you don't really often get to speak to people going, jumping from assistant coach to head coach. Right. And mm-hmm. under an assistant coach or as an assistant coach, you're playing different people's styles. And I'm sure that you can take bits and pieces from everywhere that you've been, but do you already have in your head, this is exactly how I'm going, or does it depend upon the players that you have? Um, I guess once the college draft is over. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a fantastic question. And it's a question I asked myself early on to better understand um, kind of the way that the coaching world works. And I think there's a mix. There's a mix between the way that you like to play. And there's also a mix with understanding who you have and what types of players you feel those strengths will ultimately uh, show on the pitch, right? Um, And I think it's such a fine balance. You're understanding this is the way that I want to play. But for me, it's, it's having structure, but it's having not too much structure where you're allowing the players and their creativity and their strength to flourish in that structure. So for me, I think it's a fine balance of understanding who you have and where you'd like the club to become and where you'd like the group to become and what your expectations are from a structure standpoint, but it's also allowing them to grow with the nuances of the game and the understanding of the game for themselves and what their uniqueness is that they bring to the environment as well. And so I think there's a fine line of this is what I'd like you to do. Um, and, and Obviously, you know, something I'll say kind of early on is, is I'll try not to ever say never, but I'll never say always. Now, my point with that being is that you cannot never do this because that's not the game. The game's incredibly gray, but I'm going to coach the crap out of gray. Right. And you can say that you always do this. I can't say you always do this and you'll always get out. So I want to teach when you would do something and when you wouldn't do something. So that I'm helping them develop of understanding pressure's a little bit tight here. I can actually cut back in because she's followed me in this movement, right? So I want to teach those pieces over being so caught up in, right? I want you to do this every single time. Now, there's going to be things where I want you to understand how to press, blah, blah, blah. But I can't give all that stuff away to you guys. (laughs) (laughs) Do you sleep or are your thoughts just like constantly racing about this? No, I don't. Well, I don't sleep for several reasons. I don't sleep because I have a six-week-old. And then I don't sleep on uh, on top of that because I'm always thinking. So (laughs) I have the double (laughs) money. I love that we're all getting to hear the genius that is Beth Yenes. Like this, she has been this way since I've known her in the kindest, most gentle way possible. That's so digestible. And Bev, I love that you look at your players as such holistic beings of, I'm not going to give you the formula that's going to work every single time, but I'm going to help you be a really good decision maker so that you can use your craft to then develop your game and then support the team. So yeah. on that note, when you're looking at this draft, you're on the other side of it, mm-hmm. you're making the big time decisions. <laughs> How are you approaching this? What, what are your thoughts yeah. going into this draft? Yeah, no, and I think it's been really good. We've had weekly meetings, which has been great. Um, and I must give a massive shout out to Sergio Gonzalez. He's been leading this draft um, since last year. Um, seems crazy to say last year, right? We're in 2024 now. Um, wild. But he's been leading this draft for a very long time, organizing it very early for us to be able to continue to watch players, um, watching them in groups, putting notes in in, in our, um, you know, are the way we have it organized. I think for us, it's continuing to find out, okay, where are we at and what are our roster needs? And with the ability to meet weekly like we have, um, obviously took a quick break for Christmas and New Year's, but um, we've been meeting every single week. And so I think it allows us to understand, okay, this is the direction that we need. This is probably the player that we're going to look for in this specific unit um, and in this specific line. Um, and so what do that, what does that player pool look like now? What do we understand from them from a personality perspective, right? Um, what context do we have from there? And so I think for us, it's just finding, again, you use the word holistic and that's exactly it, right? Finding um, particular players that would be on our radars for holistic reasons, right? In the sense of what we know we need to fill on the roster, but also what we know they could bring to our locker room and to the pitch and to our environment. Environment. And so I think for us, it's just going to be uh, quickly narrowing it down as we already have, but narrowing it down specifically to what our positional needs um, will be, which we have an idea, of course, of. Bev, uh, Darian's right. The fact that you're viewing everyone in a holistic sense and all these decisions holistically is so beautiful to hear. And every single interview that I read about you, your players speaking about you, everything, they all mm-hmm. talked about how tactically sound you were. And I now get it. I get it, guys. After this interview, can you just not tell? She can describe everything perfectly. She can all the details. Bev, it was an honor to have you on. Thank you so much and best of luck.